Hey folks, welcome to Thunder Punk Radio. We have our good friend Leon with us today and our friend Michael. We're going to be going over some pistol training and some rifle training. Pretty basic stuff, but it's going to be a lot of fun. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go over the four rules of firearm safety. Leon, what is the first rule of firearm safety? Treat every weapon as if it were loaded. Even when you know it's not. Creates really good habits. All right, what's the second rule of firearm safety? Always keep pointing in a safe direction. Excellent. And what dictates that safe direction? That'd be location and situation. Exactly. Sometimes there's not going to be a perfectly safe direction, but usually you can find one, but it depends upon where are you? Are you in your house? Is it you know, fifth floor in an apartment building? Are you in your basement? Where is a safe place to load and unload that farm just in case we're tired and we ain't make a negligent discharge? Leon, what if an axe murderer kicks down your door? Where's a safe direction to point that firearm? Right at him. Exactly. All right, what's the third rule of firearm safety? Keep your finger off of the trigger until you are ready to fire. Excellent. What's another way to say that just to wrap our brains around it? Keep your finger off of the trigger until you make the decision that you're ready to shoot. Awesome. All right, the last rule of firearm safety. It's uh, know your target and what's beyond. And it's not behind, right? Right, beyond. Beyond. Yeah. All right, so why do we want to know our target and what's beyond it? Give me a couple examples. Well, so you don't uh, hit anything that you don't mean to. Okay. Also, uh, make sure that there's nothing behind it that's going to ricochet and come right back at you. Yeah, there's another good reason. Lastly, we want to make sure that our target is actually our target. If we're talking about defensive shooting and, God forbid, you're involved in a mass shooting and you see someone with a firearm and you start to draw it on that person, you want to identify that that's not a concerned citizen like yourself. You want to make sure that you're actually going to be shooting at the threat. Cool. Now that we got that out of the way, we have completely empty firearms. We all buddy checked everything. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work on grip. So go ahead, safely draw your firearm and set it on the barrel. Ah, retention holster, so I didn't prep you for this. So, what we do, this is a level one retention holster. Your thumb comes down on here, and then we pull up, mm. all right? Mm. There we go, awesome. Okay. All right, so for today, the safe direction for filming right now is going to be in that direction. Where's the safe direction, gentlemen? Straight ahead, awesome. Okay, so we're gonna talk about pistol grip. The first thing we're gonna do is we're going to pick up our pistol, all right? Go ahead. Actually, first thing I'm going to show you guys, turn it over once, just turn it over. Picking up, if we're right-handed, picking up a pistol like this can be awkward, right? The simplest thing in the world to do is just grab it by the base and rotate it over. So go ahead and do that, practicing. Next, normally when we grab stuff, everything we grab in real life, we grab with two hands. Go ahead and pull out a magazine and just hold on to it the way you normally would. All right, we wrap all of our, oh, he's getting tactical, ready to go. So everything we grab, we wrap all of our fingers around. The firearm is one of the only things, unless you're a Brit and you're drinking tea, the firearm is one of the only things we extend our pinky out. Now, you guys have some decent pistol experience, so you know I'm not too concerned about it, but I just wanted to bring that up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make a finger gun. Go ahead and make a finger gun. Go ahead, place it right on that pistol, and we're going to pick up the firearm while maintaining muzzle awareness, keeping it pointed in that safe direction. Excellent. So the next thing I want you to do is take your support hand and just grab it over the top like this. All right, take your hand off. There we go. I want you to go like this. Butterfly high in the sky. Butterfly in the sky. Butterfly high in the sky. Right? Oh, reading rainbow. Oh, reading rainbow. Oh, reading rainbow. All right, so with this butterfly, we're going to get high up on this back strap. All right, the lower we hold this firearm, the lower the fulcrum point is, which increases perceived and felt recoil, all right? So we're gonna get high up on that back strap, all right? We super glue our finger to the frame. Say it, gentlemen. We super glue our finger to the frame. Awesome, rule number three, we keep our finger off the trigger, but a better way to say it is keep it up on the frame because if we just keep it down here, it might inadvertently slip into the trigger, all right? So now that we have this good one-handed grip, we're gonna be gripping it like a firm handshake, not like a frat bro, like, look at how strong I am, dude, uh, but like a, I got you, I got you, brother, handshake. That's it. So now that we have this, check out where our thumb is right now. Okay, this is a good one-handed grip, but are you guys cool? Yeah. Are you cool? Yeah, you're yeah. cool. Well, give yourself yeah. a thumbs up. Give yourself a thumbs up. Give yourself a double thumbs up. Double thumbs up. All right, we're going to put it on the base of that grip down here, Mike. All right. Open up your hand. Say swoosh. 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 All right, this is an upside down Nike swoosh right here, okay? So we're going to take our thumb and we're going to go all the way to the tail. I'm going to mirror you. All right, so check it out. Swoosh. 
swoosh. Bring it up all the way, there we go. Now, what I'd like you to do is rotate your hand just a little bit more forward. There we go. Now, open up your hands. All right, flick off the target. Flick off that tree, say so, tree. You tree. All right, this middle finger, bring it back down here. Now we're focused on this middle finger. Open up your hands. See how we have peaks and valleys right here? That middle finger is gonna go in this first valley. So just the middle finger, then the pinky, and then jam that underneath the trigger guard. There we go. Now, rotate that hand forward slightly so your thumb is pointed down the direction of the muzzle. The point of the thumbs forward grip is not so much the thumbs, but to get that full palm pressure, all right? Think big spoon, little spoon, movie night with your sweetheart, but it's a really good movie, so none of this is going on, right? If I go ahead and grab it one-handed and I just wrap this palm on, how much of my palm is touching the grip right now? None. Right. So thumbs up, cool guy, thumbs up, swoosh. That's a good two-handed grip, all right? Observe it, rotate it around while keeping a good muzzle awareness. All right, now we're just gonna set the gun down. Next thing we're gonna work on is we're gonna work on our stance. We're gonna move these barrels out of the way so the camera can see, and then we're gonna put them back. Okay, so we're gonna talk about stance. I'm gonna say a lot of silly things, all right, and I'm gonna ask you to repeat those things. And it's just like a waypoint. Remember when we're doing patrolling, right, and we pick out a waypoint or a rally point, it's a point to come back to, or it's a point to remember our route in case we have to come back, right? So in our brain, when we're setting up our stance, this is just gonna be like a rally point. Now, I know you guys have some experience, but this will also help you teach it to other people. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna stand with our feet about a shoulder width apart, nice and comfortable. All right, so now that we're at a shoulder width apart, we are standing on a railroad track, say railroad. Railroad tracks. Railroad tracks. Now, if we're standing on railroad tracks and our feet are off like this, we fall off the railroad tracks. So both of our feet are going to be going forward. All right? Take a step forward with your left foot. Now, watch both of your feet. If this back right foot gets a little squirrely, just move it around till it feels comfortable where we're both pointed forward. With your feet forward, check this out. Watch what happens to my hips if my feet are open. My hips are now pointed this way. We want our hips pointed forward for the next portion of this, all right? So put your fingers in the air. Right, both fingers in the air. I want you to touch your hips, right on your hip bone. I want you to imagine that there's a hinge right there, metal rod going fingertip to fingertip, all right? We're going to lean forward at the hips, over-exaggerate it, come back up. Let's do it three or four times, all right? Now say hinge. Hinge. So we have railroad tracks and hinge. Railroad tracks and hinge. All right, so the next part, we are going to hinge forward with our back straight, like we're doing a push-up with our head up nice and high just so our nose is over our toes. Where's our nose? Over our toes. There we go, good adjustment, Michael. All right, so now that we have this, relax, take a normal step, just stand normal. What I'd like you to do is take your chin and touch it to your chest all the way down. All right, take a deep breath. <sighs> Sucks, doesn't it? All right, now stand up nice and tall and take a deep breath. <sighs> In any kind of fight, a gunfight, whatever, you need oxygen, right? Everything's stressful. And if we're dropping our head down or bringing our head down to our gun, we're not getting enough oxygen. We're kinking our garden hose. Another reason is a lot of people will push forward and tense up and drop their head down. We don't need to do that. He who wins gunfights, he or she who wins gunfights is he or she who puts rounds on target first accurately. So we want to have the most efficient stance possible. So let's get back into our, what are we standing on? Railroad track. Awesome, so both feet forward. Or point in the right direction, left foot forward. We're going to hinge forward slightly with our head up so we can breathe. We keep our back straight like we're doing a push-up. Some people will start to arc their back like they're taking an Instagram photo. We don't want that. We just want a straight back like we're doing a push-up. Next, monkey with a symbol. Monkey with a symbol. All right, now bring it in as tight to your chest as you can. We're going to over-exaggerate slightly, and we're going to have our fingers pointed in the direction that we're looking at. Our head is up nice and tall. Remember Karate Kid? Wax on, wax off. Mr. Miyagi, wax on, wax off. He was teaching Danielson how to block while he was teaching us how to shoot. Remember the meditation scene. Just drive it out into your eye line. All right, bring it back. Drive it out in the eye line. Now this compression is super important. Never ever again will we go to the range and pick up a gun and go like this. That's negating this muscle memory, this habit that we have. Why would we do that? What did the floor do to us? Mm -hmm. Right, the second I draw from my holster, whether it's an appendix carry or a strong side like we have today, we're going to be pointing at the threat. So working on this compression right now is starting that out. Do me a favor, put your hands down here, all right? Pick them up like this. Now say, we are not bowling. We are not bowling. All right, now this, we are not fishing. We are not fishing. All right, back in, monkey with a symbol. We are driving the gun. All right, so go ahead and stick your hands out real quick. All right, good. We have our arms bent just slightly. You can stick it. There we go. We have our uh, elbows bent just slightly and our wrists are locked. All right. Our back is kind of nice and relaxed. We're not straining with our shoulders. Both of you guys look really good. Another way to do this, go ahead, keep leaning forward, but drop your arms to your side. 
Just pick up your arms like a zombie, right? Put your hands together. That's it. We don't have to extend our shoulders and work all of our back muscles. As long as we're leaning forward, we're, our muscular skeletal structure is providing stability and support and will help with recoil mitigation. The more efficient we can be, the more energy we have to sustain the fight, right? All right, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna um, go ahead and pick up our firearms, holster them, and then we're gonna come back here and we're going to work on presentation. Now, if the firearm left your sight, go ahead and clear it really quick. Okay, so we haven't really talked about drawing yet. First, we're just gonna work on presentation and sight picture. So don't worry too much about your draw. Now remember, you have a retention holster. You have to sweep your thumb across that mechanism in order to draw. Copy. All right, so as I draw, I'm gonna give my hand a home. We're just gonna pull the firearm out and we're just gonna bring it to our workspace. That's monkey with a symbol. Go ahead and do that, gentlemen. So go ahead and bring it in here. We're not getting into the draw right now. We're gonna be a little more casual. Let's work on our grip. So go ahead, cool guy, thumbs up. Now this firearm has a frame mounted safety. Most striker fired guns don't, but when you do have that, that's a good place just to put your thumb right there. Just let it sit right there. Now you see you have this pathway for your thumb to go. So go ahead and swoosh on up in there. Another way to do this, if the swoosh is a little weird, is just karate chop and then wrap it around. There we go, that looks great. All right, so we're at monkey with a symbol. We don't want it so far in that we have to shoot from here the slide hits our chest and then it doesn't function properly, right? So just out a little bit, now our finger up on the frame is pointing at the target. Our target is gonna be that tree. Pick a nice knot out on that tree, right? We're gonna go ahead and drive the gun forward up into our eye line. Excellent, relax the back a little bit. There we go, head up. You guys are looking great. All right, bring it back in, drive it out, bring it back in. Excellent, go ahead and holster your firearm. All right, so we're gonna talk about sight picture really quick. We have three things to consider. We have a front sight, we have a rear sight, and we have a target. We can only focus on one thing at a time. So we're gonna do a little bit of exercise real quick here. First, that front sight, if it's too high above the rear sight, we're gonna shoot high. If it's too low, we're gonna shoot low, All right? If it's too far to the left or to the right, you get what I'm saying? So I want them to be at equal height, all right? Say equal height. Equal height. All right. This front side post, the dot on it, we'll use my, well, whatever, my upper digit. That's where we're putting on the target. Now, some firearms have what's called a half hold, where you only put it on half, just put everything right on the dot. The difference for defensive shooting doesn't matter, just equal height, equal light. Put the pumpkin, we call it, put the dot right on the target where you want to hit. All right, so we have what? Equal, equal, equal height. height. Now, the space in between, we want equal. So the light coming through, we want it to be equal. So equal, equal light. light. So equal height, equal, height, equal, light. equal light, all right? Now, go ahead, again, draw your firearm, give your hand a home as we draw it, go bring it to your workspace, all right? Give yourself a nice two-handed grip, all right? Rotate that hand, that support hand forward just a little bit, there we go. All right, we're going to drive it up into our eye line. Now, what I'd like you guys to do is pick out a knot on that tree, all right? Now, if you can't shoot with both eyes open, go ahead and sh shut your non-dominant eye, but the goal is to eventually shoot with both eyes open. It's actually interesting because for me, uh, when I'm shooting with a camera, I'm left eye dominant. Mm -hmm. But when I close my right eye here and I go left eye dominant here, I'm off to the right a little bit, obviously, and when I close my left eye, I'm off to the, you know, left a little bit. So Perfect. I'm well, I, I skipped that. this part, so let's do this. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually, uh, so yeah, I'm go actually, ahead, pick that knot out on the tree or pick one of the cameras and put, make a little circle with your hands just like this. Michael's already done this, but you can do it along. All right, you're looking through with both eyes. You're putting the camera in the center of that circle. Go ahead and bring it back to your eye. Go ahead and look through the circle. Oh, right here? <laughs> yeah, oh, through okay. the circle with both eyes, right. both eyes open. Right. Now slowly bring it back to your face. Looks like you brought it back to your right eye. Make a smaller circle and do it one more time. Don't think about it, just do what feels natural. All right, so we're right eye dominant. Now, because you're used to shooting the camera with your left eye, I love these cool little challenges. We're gonna shut our left eye for right now. Okay. Or just squint with it, all right? Okay. Can I uh, yeah. offer a, uh, another way to find your dominant Yeah, eye? do it. All right. So place your thumb over that spot, your target spot. Close your left eye. If it didn't move, your right eye dominant. Close your right eye. If it went off to the side, you're still right eye dominant. <laughs> <laughs> no, whatever whatever eye makes it move, then then your your opposite eye is the dominant eye. Hmm. Did that work for you? He was a marine, so I'm gonna give him a minute. 
right eye dominant. All right, cool. All right, so again, we're just gonna draw our holster. All right, we're not worrying about perfection right now. We're gonna bring it up to our workspace. Excellent. Now with that, there you go, that looks good. Cool guy, thumbs up. Go ahead and give yourself a nice two-handed grip. All right, now we have equal pressure front and rear. Our wrists, once we present, are gonna be locked. Our elbows are gonna be slightly bent for shock absorption. Go ahead and drive that in there. All right, cool. Now what I'd like you to do, line up your sights, equal height, equal light. Now what I'd like you to do is focus on the target. Okay, focus on the target. Are your sights blurry? All right, is it? So focus on the target. Don't worry about the sights, keep them lined up, but focus on the target. Yep, sights blurry. Awesome, focus on the rear sight. Are you focused on the rear sight? Mm -hmm. Front sight's a little blurry. Mm -hmm. Target's a little blurry. Awesome. Go ahead and focus on that front sight post. Let me know when you have it. Mm -hmm. Now, do we notice how if we focus on the front sight post, we can still both see the rear sight post and the target just enough, but we're focused on this. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Mm -hmm. When we're shooting with iron sights, we are focusing on that front sight post. All right, so what I'd like you to do is go ahead and put your finger on the trigger. Leon, you have a safety. You're going to have to take that safety off with that thumb. There we go. Go ahead, put your finger on the trigger. We're going to pull back just a little bit till we get some resistance. All right, now we focus on the front sight post. All that matters is that front sight post. Where's your nose, Leon? Over your toes. There Over we go. Pick your head up nice and tall. There we go. Okay, now we're focused on that front sight post. We're at the wall. We're going to pull the trigger straight back, but we're going to pretend that we're just pushing a button. Go ahead and push the button. Perfect. All right, so now we're going to do something called follow through. We're going to mimic the gun recoiling just a little bit. So we're going to bend our elbows back just a little bit. We're watching the front sight post. Don't get the target, look at the front sight post. Bring it back to where it's supposed to be on that target. Focus on that front sight post. We decide if we're going to shoot or not. Again, we're not going to shoot so our finger goes up on the frame. You guys are already there. That works. Go ahead and compress and just relax for a minute. All right, we're going to do that one more time. Go ahead and reset the trigger. So you can go, keep holding on to your firearm. So just pull the slide back a little bit. So come hand over the top. There we go, just pull back a little bit. That's resetting the trigger since we don't have an actual round in here. All right, so now we're back into our position. All right, what is the nickname for this? Mm. Monkey uh, with a symbol. Monkey with a symbol. Awesome, I'm glad you did that. And look at that adjustment you made, that's great. Now go ahead and try to rotate that hand just a little bit higher up, there we go. All right, so we're bringing it in here. Our finger's pointed at our target, which means the muzzle's pointed at the target. We're gonna bring it into our eye line, and what sight post are we focusing on, gentlemen? Front sight post. Front sight post, awesome. Take your finger, we're gonna put it on the trigger. All right, focusing on that front sight post, we're going to just push the button, not allow the muzzle to move at all, not allowing the firearm to move. Excellent, we're gonna mimic some recoil. Keeping our finger on the trigger, we're gonna bring it back down. All right, focusing on that front sight post. We decide we're not gonna shoot again. Our finger comes off the trigger, about on the frame, we compress. All right, now we're gonna incorporate a scan. There's two types of scans. We're going to do a rangeism scan first. Since this is the safe direction, we're going to keep this pointed in this direction, but we're still gonna look behind us. A rangeism is something you modify because you have safety parameters on a range. I like to look left first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bend at my ankles, my knees, and my hips, and I'm going to turn around and look to my left, and I'm gonna break the 180, and I'm gonna look past that. This is tedious, but in my head, I'm gonna say, I see a bush, all right? I'm always going to pick something out and just say it in my head. Then I'm gonna turn the other way, all right? and I see some tall grass over there. Break the 180, and then I come back, I scan my target one more time, and then I holster my weapon, all right? We always look at our holster as we're holstering the weapon. The reason we're saying something in our head, reset your triggers, go put it back. The reason we're picking something out every time is, you ever shadow box? No. You never shadow, okay, cool. All right, huh? I thought mm -hmm. you were a shadow boxer. All right, so when you shadow box, you're picking out chin, floating ribs, right? <laughs> You're not just flailing your arms out. Mm -hmm. If we just go bleh, bleh, in a real defense situation, we're gonna miss that dude with the shotgun standing right behind us because we're just going through the motions and we're heightened, right? We only fall back on our lowest level of training. So every time we scan, we're gonna pick something out. We're gonna be very deliberate with our motions, all right? So next, let's talk about the draw stroke. We're gonna break this down real quick by numbers. One, we're just gonna push down so we're high up on the back strap. We're gonna push down. We're actually gonna feel it on our belt and on our holster. Two is when we manipulate that mechanism to release the holster if you have a retention holster. And check me out, we're going to draw and wherever's comfortable, we're going to immediately point it at the threat or at the target. So, boom, so my finger's pointed, okay? Three, so go ahead and do it, excellent. Now you don't have to drop it down, you can keep it up here, it doesn't matter. All that matters is that if you have to shoot from here, this slide doesn't hit your chest, all right? This hand, you wanna have a home when you do it, all right? I forgot to include that. 
Now it's at a home, we're gonna bring it up to our monkey with the symbol, make sure our grip is nice and good, and then we're gonna drive the gun out. Excellent. All right, we decide we don't have to shoot, we're gonna bring it back in, let's get a good scan, keeping that muzzle pointed. So that's more of a real world scan, we're gonna do the rangeism scan. So we're gonna keep this pointed down range like we're on a firing range, and we're gonna turn like this. And I noticed when I did it before, I didn't either, because we're on my property, all right? Excellent. And you break in the 180, scan the target one more time, the threat, make sure they're still down. Go ahead, pull to your firearm. All right, so one, we're looking forward. We can just stand normal, or I like to put my hands right here because this is a good, you know, neutral position, a good gesture. I can reach out ahead, I can go for my firearm. One, I'm already starting to give my hand a home, and I push down on the firearm. Two, I manipulate the mechanism, I bring it up, and I point it forward. Give your hand a home, Leon. There we go. Three, we bring it up to monkey with a symbol. We have that good grip on there. So let's go ahead and adjust our grip because today we're just learning. Rotate that support hand forward slightly, looking great. Go ahead and drive that gun out into your eye line. Our elbows are slightly bent, our wrists are locked. You guys look great. All right, go ahead and pull the trigger. All right. Finger goes back on the frame because we're not shooting again. We're gonna compress. We're gonna do, this time, not a rangeism scan, all right? Where our muzzle is gonna go where our eyes do. So we're standing right next to each other, so we do wanna be careful not to flag, so it's gonna go down when you pass me. But we're just gonna turn to our left and look all the way. I'm going to turn to my right and look all the way. Now, the other thing I could do is I could just turn and walk through it. That's the other thing I could do. Then I'm gonna check my threat one more time and go ahead and holster. I always watch when I holster. Excellent. All right, this time we're gonna be a little more fluid, so we don't necessarily, check this out. If I know my target is a ways away, I'm not going to stop right here. The way I do this is I'm going to, all right? So as I draw, it's just whoosh. Cool? All right, go ahead and do it. Reset your firearm, because we're gonna do a nice dry fire. Once you get a good sight picture, go ahead and give a dry fire, then put your finger on the frame, compress, and we'll do a rangeism scan. All right, go ahead whenever you're ready at your own pace. There's no rush, it's just worrying about performing the task correctly. All right. Not bad. So the muzzle came a little close to me and Mike, but you were still within, so just make sure we're aware of that Move muzzle and Got then it. give your hand a home. Okay. Mike is doing this great because we've done this probably a thousand times already. Okay, so we're gonna talk about reload drills. What I'd like you to do is go ahead and just be deliberate, give your hand a home. We're going to slowly draw our firearm. We're going to bring it out to our workspace. Take your hand, reach back, grab a magazine. Now, what I like to do, we're gonna play Ghost. All right, we're gonna play little Patrick Swayze, your Demi Moore. Check, watch, watch what we're doing right here. So I move my hand back this way, because I know if I have my hand come all the way back to here, that's how I grab my rifle mag. Mm -hmm. So I skip over all of these. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I go to the first mag, then the second mag, then the third mag, mm -hmm. all right? So we're just gonna practice loading. So right here, you're gonna move that hand back, trace the belt, so grab the first magazine. Oh, the first one. Yep. We have the first magazine. We're going to pull it out. Now check it out. I have my finger down here. I never used to load like this, but this has just gotten a lot faster than with me. All right? I'm going to rotate my firearm. I'm going to be looking at my firearm. It doesn't matter what they're doing over there if this gun isn't up. And I'm just going to insert the magazine and bring it all the way up. Excellent. That's the that's the way to do it. All right? Don't worry about racking or anything. We just loaded the firearm. Okay. So go ahead and push the gun out. All right. Pull the trigger. Click, oh, nothing's happening. All right, so I'm going to bring the firearm in. I'm gonna rotate it. As I'm rotating, I'm gonna break my grip slightly. If I can't reach that mag release, if I can, then awesome. We're going to push that, but we're gonna strip the magazine. Instead of letting it drop, we're going to strip it. Now, we're just gonna pull it out enough that it's going, then we're going to reach our hand back to our belt. All right, grab that other magazine. Finger running up the mag like this. There we go. We're going to insert the magazine. Excellent. We're going to back up, get that good grip. I'm gonna drive it forward. Excellent, we don't have to shoot. We're gonna compress. We're going to give a quick rangeism scan. All right, check our target one more time. All right, cool, go ahead and holster your firearm. All right, now is when we're going to incorporate snap caps. Go ahead and pull out one empty magazine. So when we're doing this from now on, practice 
rounds forward, putting your finger on the base. As it, there we go. Yep, and we just use it as a pointer. All right, so we have this empty magazine. Right now we have two magazines with snap caps in it. What we're going to do is we're going to draw our pistol. We're going to insert a magazine, empty magazine. All right. We're going to pull the slide back and leave it at slide lock. We're going to go ahead and holster our firearm just like this. We are going to do a normal draw. We're going to drive the gun out. We're going to pull the trigger. Nothing happens. We realize the slide is locked back. So we're going to bring the weapon in, rotating it slightly so we can take the magazine out. We are going to strip the mag. A lot of firearms, especially Glocks, you push it, they almost always come out. But we're in a gunfight, so we don't want almost always. If we have to sacrifice a tenth of a second to guarantee 100% magazine extraction, that's what we're going to do. So as we break our grip, this hand's just going to come down and pull the magazine. We don't have to pull it and throw it on the floor, right? We just give it enough oomph. As soon as it's clear, we let go, let it fall on the ground. We bring our hand back. We grab the other magazine. We go ahead and insert it. Then, this is up to you, our hand can come up and push down on the slide stop. We used to call it slide lock. The slide stop to push the slide forward to chamber this snap cap, this dummy round. Or we can come over the top, pull it, and let go. All right, it's up to you. We're going to go nice and slow. We're just going to be deliberate and take as much time as it needs to perform the task. All right, we're not worried about fast or slow. All right, so we're in our nice neutral stance. All right, our feet are forward. Go ahead and draw your firearm. Give that hand a home. Great job. Go ahead and draw, dr present that firearm, get a good sight picture. Once you have a good sight picture, try to pull that trigger. Nothing's happening. So we're going to bring the firearm in. We're going to push the mag release, strip the mag, put it on the ground. All right, reach back, grab the other one. We're looking at the firearm. We insert the mag. As soon as it's inserted, we look back at our target. All right, we bring it forward. Once you have a good sight picture, give a nice dry fire. Excellent. Okay, finger off the trigger, up on the frame. We're going to compress. Let's do a real world scan without. Scan. Nope. 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 Oh, okay, hold yep. on. No, this is cool, man, because this is first time doing this stuff. Yep. All right, so do me a favor. Right. As you put the mag in, bring your hand up over the top. So okay. go ahead, put it in there. Bring your hand up over the top. Rack it. There we go. Put that support hand on. Cool guy, thumbs up. Good job. And give me a good dry fire. Excellent. Finger up on the frame. Compress. Let's do a real world scan. So watch your muzzle awareness, but bring the muzzle with you for the real world scan. Excellent. And then check the threat and holster your magazine. Okay, the reason we have a snap cap is if I hit that slide stop, it's going to let the slide go forward, chambering that dummy round into mm -hmm. the chamber, mm -hmm. all right? Sometimes if we hit the slide stop on an empty magazine, because that follower has a notch that pushes up on the slide stop, we have what's called last round hold open. The slide stop allows us to do the drill, all right? Especially if we're just doing this method, you could do this method on an empty magazine all day. Go ahead and draw, gentlemen. All right, go ahead and just pull the slide back all the way and let it go. All right, those dummy rounds, they all landed right next to each other. We're just gonna keep track of where they are. now. Check this out, Leon, do this a couple times. So it's not gonna work. That's why we have the snap cap in, mm -hmm. all right? So we're gonna do the same thing over again. So this is mimicking a real world draw. And you guys can do this at home, safety and comfort of your own home. Super cheap to do this. You need a firearm, holster, and snap caps, that's it. Okay, are you ready? Go ahead, draw your firearm, present, pick out a good knot on that tree. Once you have a good sight picture, pull the trigger. Oh, we're not doing it, nothing's happening. Oh, our gun's empty, bring it in. Strip that magazine, put it on the ground, reach back. Good job, good job working through it. Go ahead and insert that magazine. All right, good. Drive it forward. Once we have a good sight picture, give me a nice dry fire. Excellent, finger off the trigger, compress. Now we're gonna do a rangeism scan, keeping our weapon down range. All right, go ahead and, yeah, good job. All right, we're gonna check that target one more time. All right, he's toast. Go ahead and holster your firearm. Excellent. All right, boys, we're gonna go through everything. Be deliberate. This is about learning. Shoot her up. Good job. Yep, watch your gun while you reload. There we go, new weapons. Interesting to get to, you know, used to it. Good. Okay, ranges and scan. Excellent, make sure you're picking something out when you scan. All right, go ahead and reholster. 
That looked great. This time, Leon, I'd like you to try to bring your hand over the top and just rack it. Okay. All right, whenever you're ready. All right, let's just that grip. Hand over the top. Yeah, good adjustment. Awesome. Okay, and then we watch our holster. Excellent, all right, great job, gentlemen. So this is what we're going to do. We're gonna just do one malfunction drill. This is gonna be one of the most common. This is called tap rack bang. Go ahead, say it. Tap rack bang. Tap rack bang. All right, so I'm going to draw my firearm. I'm going to get a good sight picture. I'm gonna pull, oh shoot, nothing happened. So I'm gonna bring the gun in just slightly. I'm gonna tap. I'm gonna hit the bottom of the magazine with a little bit of force. I'm gonna come over the top. I'm going to rack the gun. I'm gonna get my grip back up, get my sight picture back up, and then I'm gonna pull the trigger. Bang. Finger off the trigger, compress. We're gonna do a rangeism scan since we're gonna be doing a live fire later. We're gonna practice this. Look at my holster. That's it. Cool. Are we ready? So for this stance, we're just kind of, our feet are already ready to go, but we're standing normal. We don't start to lean forward, all right? We don't get that hinge until we're presenting the gun. Cool? Good. All right, once we have that good sight picture, let's try to pull the trigger. Click, nothing happened. Bring the weapon into our workspace. Finger off the trigger, finger off the trigger, finger off the trigger. Excellent, give it a tap. Rack. And bang. Excellent, finger off the trigger. There we go, rangeism scan, double check our threat, make sure it's down. Excellent, okay, go ahead and holster your pistol. Pretty simple, right? So sometimes, as you get better at this, you're gonna recognize sometimes right away what's wrong and be able to fix that immediately. But a good just fall back on is tap, rack, bang. Sometimes we have to tap it because for some reason the gun isn't into battery. Sometimes the magazine extended a little bit. I know I have one holster that it's a concealed carry holster where if I carry my shield, it wants to pop the magazine out and I don't notice sometimes. So I don't use that holster anymore, but it happens. So we put the magazine back in, we rack it, which actually chambers around and then gets it going in. This is the most common malfunction drill you guys will do. So go ahead, when you're ready, draw, get a good sight picture. Don't pull the trigger till you get a good sight picture. Once you hear that click, go into immediate action whenever you're ready. No, you, you did it. Mm -hmm. Push it back out there. Get that good sight picture. Squeeze. Excellent. Okay, rangeism scan. Good job. Check that threat one more time. Cool. Go ahead and holster your firearm. Yeah, now, it threw me off when it came when it came out. Yep. So, so that's if it's a hard primer strike. The it. gun didn't go. With striker guns, we don't have second strike capability. That's only double like those crappy Berettas we okay. carry. Yeah. Military, no offense to Beretta. Ours weren't that great. But if it's a hard primer strike, that, that bullet doesn't matter anymore. We have to rack it to reset the trigger, so just put a new one in and go Got to it. town. Now here's one thing I'll add real quick. We don't have to present all the way. We can just go halfway, because if we think that threat's down, as long as the muzzle's ready to go if we need to, so this might be good enough. If it's an intense situation, I think it's good to practice both. You're talking about when you're rechecking after the scan? Yes. Got it. And do your thing, gentlemen. Okay, watch that support hand, watch that thumb get, okay, we're gonna pause you for a second. Put this hand up, get this hand a little bit higher. There we go, we wanna keep it mm. to the frame. Excellent, get that sight picture. Good, great job, dude. Excellent, so what we're going to do, and we're gonna incorporate all once, we're going to go click, oh, nothing happened. We're gonna bring it in, tap, rack, click, tap, rack, click, Tap, rack until we're out. We're gonna reload and then do three tap racks. Yep. Got it. Leon gets to do four. All right, so whenever you're ready, gentlemen, just work through it. You know, we're just working on the technique. We're not trying to look sexy. We're trying to become dangerous. Go ahead. Okay, strip the mag. Excellent. All right, give me a good dry fire. Did it click? Yep. Okay. Tap. Rack. All right. Get that grip forward. Get that. There we go. All right. Okay. Tap. Rack. Okay. Let's make sure we put our finger on the frame when we bring it back. Excellent. Tap. Rack. Excellent. And then we have a club. 
All right. Excellent. How'd that feel, gentlemen? Talk to me. So I used to do that all the time, and then I don't know why I stopped, and I started doing this weird like wiggle thing, like get it out or whatever. I don't know. It was dumb. And then uh, some people I respect yelled at me, and I was grateful because I yelled at myself, and I start stripping it again. It's it's worth it because it works 100% of the time. Yeah, and I think also it's just the consistency of making sure it's the this right here is that consistency because I can understand where you're feeling comfortable with the weapon, mm -hmm. but in the beginning, the uncomfortable is the correct way, and it's getting comfortable in the uncomfortable. So I notice myself being. You, you know, with my with my left with your grip, here. yeah, because yeah, that's a new grip. that's a new technique to Very you. Much. Yeah, but so, you're doing great. Yeah, considering so, it's new. So taking my time and not worrying about rushing it, or even you know, it's nice to have somebody here a little more experienced that's doing it faster because. I'm not worrying about going as fast. I'm just consistently trying to get my uh, my habits down correctly. Yeah, perfect practice yeah. makes perfect. Yeah, dude, I think you did great because a lot of people will get egos or they'll get upset like, oh, I got to start over. Where, where you, you ran into the thing, or like, you know, as you brought back, you had your trigger on the finger once. Well, this is the place to do it when we're in mm -hmm. a safe environment, right? Mm -hmm. And so you didn't beat yourself up. You're like, oh yeah, this is new, and I'm you know letting things go everywhere. Okay, cool. I just fixed it. I thought that was awesome. Right. So Mike, any any notes? For you, uh, observations. I just gotta remember to strip that magazine. Yeah, your technique, I can tell you've been doing the dry fire drills, man. That's awesome. Rock and roll. All right, cool. We're gonna move on to uh, rifle.